What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to the uh, cold frame project here in the old Vilco door space. Last time we left off here we had filled in with, uh, with dirt and uh, we were getting ready to build the actual frame structure. So what I have is um, a couple of two by twos here and I'm just setting those up following along the lines of the original brick structure. And then I have these two storm windows that came off the house when we replaced the windows and I'm gonna use those as the greenhouse portion of this uh, cold frame. Now, the, the, you can see the one is much bigger than the other one, but we're just gonna, we're gonna make that work. I'm not concerned about that, we're just gonna make it work. Uh, we'll probably put the longer one up top and then have the shorter one on the bottom just so it's not in the way. So let's get to uh, setting these up. I have these two set up on the frame already and then we'll drop these windows on top. When I got into the front here, I noticed this was actually, this was set up as a hinge. So I'm gonna take that whole part off so that this can go back to the window. And there was some, I got some more uh, shingles that I'm gonna put up there too. Looks like it's some, you know, some weather stripping and stuff like that, but this is, it just came right off. I didn't even need a hammer. So that's over there. So now, I wanna get this close to the, to the window frame so we don't have any gaps there. And then I'll bring in my window. And now I'm setting it off the house a little bit because I do have the shingles that I'm gonna put on there so I need to measure those in. But you can already see I'm way off on the sides. And that's intentional just because the window is so big but I loved how huge these panes were. We're gonna get a lot of light into this part of the greenhouse. I have the other window behind me here that I'm gonna use to level up for measurement. And I just wanna get it flush to the edges of the, the glass part so that it's at least semi-square. It doesn't have to be totally square. Bump those up. And then this is where the shingles will come in. And I have a few that'll overlap. You can see how far over those go. So that should be that should be good there. I could even bring the windows down a little bit further, and I probably will. Just because I want to bring it up to where the gaps are in the shingles, just so that once it runs off, it'll be covered by the window there. Now that I have the windows squared up and the position that I want them in, uh, I'll be able to get the screws in. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a bit that's slightly larger than my screw because I don't want any cold or water to warp this and potentially crack the glass because this is an immovable part in there. So I'll drill a pilot hole with the slightly larger bit, line it up with my, with my uh, beam here, and I'm drilling away from the glass so as not to crack that too. And you can tell when, when you hit the, the second part of the wood there. <clears throat> Take that. Get our bit in, Phillips bit. And these are just deck screws so they won't rust or anything. And I'm not putting them in all the way. I'm putting them there just because that's how long the screws are. <laughs> I didn't have anything shorter um, deck screw wise. So I'm just gonna put those in that far and I'll go ahead and put in probably two on each window. Obviously these will only get two because there's only two positions there and then that'll secure everything into where I'll be able to move the frame and work on the rest of the project here. And now that everything's secure, we can just lift it up and get it out of the way. So 
So now comes the fun part. We're gonna fill her up with hay. Um, hay you can get pretty much anywhere. Uh, hay or straw, either one. Apparently there's a difference. Um, you can get it pretty much anywhere if you're in the uh, in rural areas or even suburbs of most cities. You can get hay or straw anywhere, really. Um, just look it up. Search for it online or something. Uh, we have ours right at our little farmer's market down the street. Uh, they also carry it a lot at feed stores, um, any kind of like farming supply stores because they use it for bedding for uh, various animals um, that people keep residentially. So we'll cut this bale open. I have it in a wheelbarrow just so that whatever I don't use, it isn't going to get all over the place. So if you heard that pop, that's, that whole front came up. Um, so it'll be in chunks like this. And we're just gonna lay down the chunks, I guess, like that. And we're gonna give it a really good base layer of hay here. Almost like a little hay table. And just rough it up a little bit to fill in any of the gaps. I wanna get it up against this brick wall too, uh, just to hold in any heat we can use you know brick is good for uh, keeping cold out but also keeping heat in so uh, we talked before about the concrete base under here how that will actually prevent um, the, the heat from staying in the ground it'll actually suck up the heat but also brick does kind of the same thing so it's an insulator and a uh, absorber we get a few more chunks of hay here down in, up it up a little. This is this is turning out really good here. Really nice. I like this. Filling in well. We'll go right up to the edge here because I'm gonna fill in. I mean, I'm not even putting that many trees in here right now because it's not I mean we just got our first snow um, and it wasn't even that much it just it all melted by the next day but um, we also got our first big frost this morning um, everything is kind of protected under the tree back there on the on the growing bench any of the small stuff so I'm not really super concerned about getting everything in here right now I want it to kind of go dormant on its own and uh, go through the stages it needs to go through to become nice strong trees because especially in this area of the world we're in upstate New York you want you want your trees to get cold hardy and that's what we're shooting for here there's a little ladybug you can go over there uh, so we're really making kind of a uh, a nice little spot here for our trees really getting them out of the cold but also allowing some airflow through this, through this hay. Um, and up here is really where the trees are gonna be. And that's gonna be our next step is getting the trees in. I'm just stomping this down, making sure it's got, it's really in there, because we're gonna go and throw some more hay on top of the trees to really get them nice and snuggled in. So I think that's pretty good as far as hay coverage. Got a lot left over for the, the backyard. We're gonna bury some of the pots and cover those up as well. And as I'm sitting here, look at this. Got a nice little pre-bonsai maple here. I think that's a Norway maple. That is a nice little specimen. Anyways, let's get some plants in here. So our first tree in the, the cold frame is gonna be my favorite, the rhododendron that I call big guy. Um, he has been a uh, part of our moss series. Um, he was a little bit of our, uh, our posts early on in the 2021 season, but he's gonna go into the cold frame first and he's gonna go up closest to the window because I might, this window does open to the basement. So I might wanna pull him out and get some more pictures of his fall foliage before he's away for the winter. But we're gonna get him tucked in Next up is going to be my pink heather, the uh, split trunk pink heather. Uh, this was actually the, the 
the tree that we did the moss series on. So that is that turned out so nice. It's just beautiful, and I can't wait to work on this next season. Um, a lot of uh, branch changes coming next season for the pink heather, and hopefully we'll be able to get her to flower. So we got her tucked in there too, nice and cozy. Get them out here a little bit so they'll be able to get some light still from the window. Our next one, he's almost full dormant, is uh, a little tanuki maple there. This is a uh, Norway maple. Um, it's got that nice red bark now that it's young. And uh, this is my uh, deciduous tanuki experiment and worked out great. You can see how much thickness that trunk has already gotten. It was this size. See that little guy? It was that size when I put him in. Now he's, he's big. So we'll tuck him in there too. And then uh, these aren't in bonsai form yet, but I just want to throw them in because I thought they'd be kind of susceptible. This is an Oregon grape. And the only reason I thought this would be susceptible is because it's a non-native species. Um, it's actually invasive here in New York. It's obviously from the Pacific Northwest being an Oregon grape, but it's beautiful. It's got those spiky leaves on it. And that's going to be a neat little forest planting once I get it going. But for right now, it's going in the cold frame. And also this honeysuckle, um, for no other reason than the leaves are really, really soft on it. And I want to form this into a, a sellable pre bonsai next season when we go to market. So I just want to make sure that this one is secure. But that's everything in that uh, I'm getting in for now. And um, towards the uh, later on in the season, probably in the next couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, towards the end of November, it's November 5th right now, I'm going to actually cover this all in in hay too to give them a good opportunity to make it through the harshest part of winter, which is um, end of December, early January for us. And uh, I'll still be able to water them from the window right here. Just open that up and I'll be able to water them if they, if they do need water. So I'll be able to check on them and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna completely cover them in. I'm just gonna kinda, kinda pack it around the pots, give them a little more insulation. I just wanted to give another angle here so that you could see from above the spacing of the plants. I don't want them right on top of each other uh, because I don't want them kind of like messing with each other. So if anything's touching, you don't want the sides of the frame touching the plants. You don't want the roof of it touching the plants uh, because anything touching is most likely going to get cold, brittle, and die. Even if the plants are touching each other, they do run the risk of not being insulated properly. But now you can even see how beautiful this thing is. The colors, I'm gonna pull this out and get some pictures before we, before we close this up. But that's the next step. We're gonna pop the roof on now and get it all sealed up and ready for winter. This is what's called healing in the trees. So you can see how the pots are covered, completely surrounded by a good seven, eight inches of hay going out from the pots and also a little bit sprinkled on top. The whole point of this is to keep the roots from freezing. If the roots get too cold, the tree will die. So that's the whole point of this entire project is to not kill these trees that I spent all season growing and uh, making nice so that we can still work on them next year. So that's the healing in process there with the hay. And as I zoom out here, you'll see the full cold frame base. So now we're gonna put the lid on and seal her up for the season. Like a glove. Now that we're healed in and sealed up, you can kind of you can see the plants underneath here looking really nice and happy. Uh, we are gonna move on to our shingling process to finally seal everything in. So I noticed that this board up here was still really good, so I'm gonna just tack right into that. 
These are 30-year uh, architectural shingles that I had in the garage. Um, running them over the edge a bit on that side just to get out any extra water and stuff like that. Move over a bit so that we can run one through the two when we seal it up. And that's that there. So I'm going to take and overlap where where these seams are. I want to overlap with the next one just to give it a little more security. this one too and let it run off run off this far edge Make sure we get two in and that's good there now we'll move on to the bottom so here's the gap that we have at the bottom and, and that was completely intentional. I could have completely sealed this off or even just piled all the hay up, which I'm doing right now. Um, I just want to get enough up here to block it. It's, it's insulation. I mean, that's what it's doing. It's insulation, but the wind should still be able to, or not the wind, but the air should still be able to get through. So I could pack it in real tight, but I'm not going to because airflow is important for this project as well and if you know anything about these old farmhouse windows uh they provide plenty of air leakage but the airflow is good and i don't want to don't want to make this thing airtight so that it's only getting warmer air out of the basement so i want it to still be able to get the cold air so that these plants can go dormant and come back stronger next year so that's the plan here what i'm doing with the edge of the hay here and if you remember the uh, the bricks that fell off last time well, we're going to use those for a little makeshift wall. I'll get that one in, and I'll get this one in place too. And that's just going to keep any keep any animals out, really. Uh, more than anything else is just keep animals out. Um, because we don't want them coming in here and making a home where they're not invited. That's the plan there. And then I'm just going to cover this up with a single shingle. Because I still want to, I'm going to pack some in there maybe, or uh, whatever we want to do. Maybe I will do two shingles just to overlap it. That works. That works. Because then there's still a hole here and a hole on the other side for airflow. Plus, underneath has plenty of airflow too. But this will also give me an opportunity when I can come out here and brush off the snow, shovel off the snow. This is on the opposite side of the house that I'm normally doing stuff on. But um, uh, there's plenty of opportunity here to, to be taking care of that. So I'm just gonna drive a couple nails through here just to set this up quickly. Just driving one nail on each side through both shingles just to secure them. You can see just by me pounding on that, like how secure this glass really is. I mean, this stuff is super durable. It's, you know, 80, 100 year old glass. So um, that's gonna be solid. And that's it. That's that's the full project there. Um, I'm gonna pan out here and then we'll go down in the basement and I'll show you the view from, from the inside. Here is the finished project, you know? It ain't the prettiest thing, but what is really? As long as it's nice and sealed up and the plants are going to be happy in there. I mean, it's basically a greenhouse with airflow and no heat. So a cold frame is what it's called. So that was all of that part. And then down here you can see under here where we're going to keep critters out but let the air flow in. And the shingles are up there to wick off any water that wants to come in there. Um, in the spring too, this will work for a really nice greenhouse for starting seeds or growing little plants 
and I think that it'll work out really well for that. So let's go inside and I'll show you the view from the inside window. And here we are inside the nice warm basement. We'll pop open the cold frame here and it's got a little latch up top to keep it open in case we need to get in there for any reason, such as watering in that. And there she is. So there's there's big guy, the rhododendron, got the pink heather, and the other small trees behind it. But you can see up here we have some airflow coming in from the sides, and that's gonna provide some nice cool air that'll help these guys go dormant. Also have a slight uh, spacing issue there, so that'll also provide some nice cool air. And you can see down all the way to the end how we have the hay packed up. Hopefully no little critters think this is going to be their home and start eating on my trees, but I'll be able to see them through the window. So we'll take care of that problem. But that's, that's a, this was a great project. I really enjoyed doing this and this is going to be some good protection for trees and also a nice greenhouse for young plants uh, for a long time. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you uh, can use this for inspiration to build your own cold frame and um and winter out your trees the right way do a good job with them and have them saved over for next year god bless thank you for watching stay green <music>